and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for attending this uh, press conference. Um, my name is Brian Hay, Detective Superintendent of the Fraud and Corporate Crime Group, and I'd just like to share with you some of the efforts and work of members of the uh, Fraud and Cyber Crime Group that um, recently they have been working on a syndicate that has targeted the precious metals industry and also backpackers and tourists coming to this country to use them as guinea pigs and um, money mules and exploited them insofar as these people thought they were obtaining some legitimate employment only to have their passports taken from them, used to, uh, it'll be alleged, to establish bank accounts and to move money. Essentially, it'll be alleged that the people involved in this criminal syndicate were trading for, um, fake gold and other precious metals to members of the precious metals industry to then obtain the money which would be transferred, it'll be alleged, into the accounts that were opened with the compromised passports. As we go further into it, we found uh, weapons, we found counterfeit notes, we found instruments of forgery. Our investigations are continuing. We uh, understand that this group had been operating uh, at least since 2012, targeting the Cairns, South East Queensland and Brisbane areas. Uh, it wouldn't have, be of any surprise if um, it extended further than that, but we've only uh, recently commenced this aspect of the investigation. The work to date by the members of the Fraud and Cybercrime Group has been exceptional. Um, as you can see from the exhibits at the back, um, it's quite an array. It, um, he was sophisticated to the extent that after the metals had been treated that they would actually be initially tested as authentic. So the, um, what we are seeking is information from the precious metals industry and from the backpackers and the tourist industries. If anyone has information that they may have been parted or uh, been recruited into this uh, network unwittingly or if they have had their uh, passport stolen or compromised um, we wish that they will come forward to share their information with us because the investigation is only in the early stages and we have a lot more work to do. And any assistance that members of the public, backpackers or the precious metal industry would be of great uh, value to us. How many backpackers do you think? We don't know. Anyway, roughly? Mm -hmm. uh, in the, I would suggest over 20 at this point in time. How did this racket come to light? We, there were complaints received of uh, fake, um, two aspects. One was, was uh, fake gold, I understand, or fake precious metals being sold, and the other of, was uh, backpackers reporting their passports stolen. How were they being stolen? As part of the recruitment process, they were actually asked to surrender their passport to them. Uh, and they gave, you know, a number of reasons for that, and they were then kept. What were the backpackers thinking that they were being employed as? How were, how were they targeted? To, uh, sorry, how were they targeted? What were they or? thinking that they were in, in being employed as? Was it advertised in the newspapers that they, they were, were They were the salespeople on behalf of this company to go and sell precious metals. Yeah. Where were the backpackers from? Um, well, we know they were being Cairns, Gold Coast and Brisbane. Adverts were put in, they were targeting Asian nationals. Uh, adverts were put in um, Asian-based uh, community bulletins. Uh, notes were put up at backpackers' hostels. It sounds pretty unique and sophisticated. Have you seen anything like this before? No, no. This is uh, this is very clever indeed. It um, it'll be alleged that the uh, the mastermind behind these operations has gone to s some lengths to actually distance themselves as much as possible from getting their hands dirty, so to speak. So have you um, laid any charges? Preliminary charges have been laid in respect of the counterfeit, uh, counterfeit, the counterfeit currency, um, possession of implements of forgery, the possession of weapons, and uh, contravention of a direction. Is it, is it the mastermind that you, that you think you have charged yes. so far? Yes, we're, we're confident we have the principal. Um, in custody at this point in time. A number of people sort of working under him to... From time to time, yes. It looks without doubt, without question. Um, once the money uh, had gone into the accounts um, paid by the precious metal industry people, 
uh, that it's then been withdrawn in cash at a variety of ATMs and we have uh, evidence there that it was different people undertaking those tasks. When you say the passport stolen, you were physically taken from them and not returned, not okay. simply copying them or...? Both. It was taken and not returned and it was also copied and then sometimes returned. The full ex if you can appreciate the full extent of this, um, we, we are still exploring. So he would send out these backpackers and tourists with fake medals yes. to sell them to those gold buying places at shopping centres and things like that? That's correct. And we know they had uh, evolved to a further stage that the deliveries were being made in the mail. And that's why the fact that these, uh, this operation could have extended outside the borders of Queensland is a possibility. So he's got quite a lot of skill to be able to produce fake gold that tests as authentic. That's right. Some metal um, skills would be uh, appropriate. Metallurgy. Metallurgy skills. I try to say that. Is he a trained metallurgist? We're still exploring that, but um, well, there are some skills in the metallurgy industry. Can't you say that on the use of here? The mastermind has targeted backpackers because they do present an easy target? Uh, absolutely. And they come to this country with an element of trust in the, in the Australian way of life. Um, and also, of course, they're here for a short period of time. So if they are elements of the crime, they won't be in this country for such a long time as to hang around and possibly give evidence against that person. I mean, that could be seen as one of the motivations, if that's it. Exactly, I don't know what time will tell. How many passports did you find in this place? We are still going through a lot. You can see some of them are laid out the back. I think there's probably a good dozen there, but there are there are many more that we are still going through. Sorry, so these backpacks that have been targeted, they've been contacted through, you know, uh, responded to an ad, have met with this person. Yes. They've had their passports stolen. Are they then recruited still to go out and do the, the selling of this fake jewellery? That's correct. I'm trying to work out whether the stealing of the passport comes in. Or when they didn't get it back. Of course, they surrendered their passport as part of the employment process. Then as uh, they go and do their jobs and undertake their roles and functions, uh, then the passport was not returned to them. So it wasn't a blackmail situation? Like you no. Back to you. Not that we know of at this time. We haven't spoken to all the holders of the passports. We expect that some of these people would have left and gone home. We know some of the passports have been uh, apparently reported stolen. Um, but we've got to undertake the status of where all these people are. But if he has these backpackers doing his work for him, did, are you across the purpose of stealing the passports and, and what he's using? That the passports, it will be alleged, were facilitated the opening of bank accounts, taking over identities, potentially to take out loans. We have seen loan applications in the material um, and um, committing fraud then against banks and, and financial institutions in their name. Dipping with these backpackers is using them to sell the fake jewellery and then also exploit going. them for money laundering, it will be alleged, and uh, fraud, yes. How many people do you think were involved in the operation? Um, too early to say at this point in time. Not a, not a large syndicate by any means, and possibly the players have changed over the time, the course that it's run. We know this, this group have been active since uh, 2012, um, but we need assistance from the public to uh, help sh shed greater light on the situation. The person that faces these charges, are they in Brisbane or up in Cairns? They're on the Gold Coast. Have we, any idea of the weight of fake gold that has been sold or seized? No, not at this time. And the reality is, I have no doubt, that we have people in the precious metal industry with some of this fake gold in their possession that uh, have no idea that they've actually purchased. Can you tell us about the man that you have charged his age where he lives? 29 from Mermaid Waters. Uh, he will appear in the Southport Magistrates Court on the 26th, 22nd of um, this month. There is also a 23-year-old Korean woman who was also involved in this matter, will make an appearance in, again in the Southport Magistrates Court and I'll get the date, oh sorry, the 5th of September. Well, was it Korean backpackers who in particular who were targeted? Korean was one of them, but there were others. Other, right. other Asian nationalities nationals. in general? That's correct. Yep. A 29-year-old man, is he of an Asian background? No, he's not. And did he run this 
this whole operation from his mermaid waters apartment or house? Is that well, we're still exploring all of that. We know the fact that they, we allege they were operating information we have, or they were operating in other parts of the state, we've still got to put it all together. But the majority of this stuff receives from his the principal house. residence? That's correct. And was, that, was it an apartment or a house? An apartment. Well, the reports of the stolen, or the complaints about the stolen passports that, uh, that triggered police inquiries? There was, uh, yes it was, yes. The biggest challenges for police um, finding the victims because chances are a lot of them have gone back overseas. Absolutely, and that's why we have been in contact with a number of our Asian embassies to try and uh, two things: facilitate information and find out what the situation is, how many they, how many passports they've had to replace, but also we've got to look at providing some prevention and education warnings to tourists and foreign nationals coming here to be aware of this. Yes. Signage up or you just some, going that's up. right, just advices, travel advices, travel warnings, um, signs where applicable to get a message out there to the backpacker industry to resist, you know, to think about who they're uh, uh, putting their uh, in contact with their clients. What a way to do that because a number of hostels, um, hotels will all, you know, often, especially backpackers, require to see your passport and often take a copy of it. Would you recommend you know, that they don't do that? What are some safeguards people can take before? Well, the fundamental rule is you never part with your, your passport. I mean, that's bottom line. If someone wants to take a copy of it, I mean, I wouldn't let anyone just take a copy of my passport, for example, but never certainly let anyone take possession of your passport. Then the reality is you don't need, of course, advice. You do not need to surrender your passport for the purpose of any employment. That's nonsense. So is it the case that um, these backpackers just don't quite understand the requirements surrounding employment and that sort of thing in Australia and that's how they get into this trap? I would suggest that that's a reasonable assumption to make. Um. If you look down the back you'll see some uh, simple, some looks like some zinc metal, zinc coated um, wire strapping. You've got uh, steel wire, uh, and there's some filings and shavings. The, the, the origin of the base metal is not so much important as the uh, as you'll see the paints and the powders that we use to coat it. For people in the industry who did end up with these, um, how can they tell if it is fake? Well, they need to look at, for example, who they purchased it from, how they paid, did they pay it into a foreign national bank account, um, did, you know, were these people on holiday? Did they have a conversation with them? They need to do greater scrutiny on, on the material, do more extensive testing, um, and ask them to give us a call at the Fraud and Cybercrime Group, double three six four double six double two, and uh, we'll see if we can help them with their inquiries. Was it primarily gold buyers that you mentioned getting stung this? That surprises me. If your job is to buy gold, that you're going to be you know, stitched up and buy fake gold. Yeah, but it's like anyone, you, the principal of the business, of course, may have great uh, skill in identifying gold, but new employees may not be so skillful. So no private sellers? Like going door-to-door door or to just members we're, of the public? We're still exploring that, but no, it's, you know, they were approaching the, the metal industry, the precious metals industry, so... Was there some sort of workshop at the house with Amanda Lee? Like, is that difficult to do to cope during? What kind of process is it? Well, it's not that difficult, apparently, but um, there is suggestions the, the gentleman was uh, did have a background in metallurgy, um, and certainly the paints managed that and coatings that were being used had this were skillful enough to actually um, come up when tested as legitimate. Uh, it must, must frustrate or anger you that this bloke is targeting backpackers who, like you said, uh, do place their trust in the Australian community way of life. Well, I think anyone that uh, attacks visitors of this country, it's frustrating for, uh, as, as an Australian, as a Queenslander, that, you know, it tarnishes our reputation. And uh, these people need to be stopped as soon as possible. And it's very pleasing that this syndicate has been brought to a stop. Do you think that there are other members of the syndicate? Is that where you're going now? Are you trying to find if there are other We're, We are prepared to look uh, widely at the situation to see who else has been involved. Um, we have to go through now and piece as much of this together as we can, and the more information the public can give us, the better. And you thought that this fellow was selling these stolen passports? 
still happen outside of the movies? Passports you sell? are a commodity that are traded in various parts of the internet every hour of every day. Passports are worth money. Yeah, for a Depends what it is. I know there's a website in the dark market that specialises in calling for Australian passports. And I have no doubt that there would be other uh, uh, websites there for uh, specialist Asian passports. A passport is worth money. No Australian passports so far you've come across in this? Not so far. What's the young 23 year old Korean woman charged with? Um, charge with, I understand, uh, fraud, um, fraud offences. But I'll can I confirm that for you? Yeah. Were they a couple? Uh, to be explored. Ron, sorry, I missed this, but um, uh, do you have any idea of the quantum of money we're talking about through this well, record? Uh, again, further to be explored. We, we do have complaints there relative to about $30,000 worth of uh, fraud. Um, but I suggest to you that can only go up. That's one, like one transaction of 30,000, or that's no, a series of series transactions. Okay, and please, if you just get that message out 